got a great a great topic tonight. Um, I hope you guys are, are networking, mingling, um, getting to network with uh, with some great people that are here on the island. Um, we got some some gentlemen here that are going to talk about bringing Web three to the manufacturing plants here in Puerto Rico. And we have uh, we'll start with Alex Diaz. Hello, how are you? I'm Alex Diaz uh, here. Uh, just going to introduce. Oh, Rusty, yeah, yeah. Ramesh, excuse me, I changed his name. <laughs> yeah, that's my uh, name for tonight. Uh, Ramesh, I, I've been here nine months now. I moved, I, I came during the Puerto Rico Blockchain Week in December and I moved. Uh, that's all the story of what we are doing here. Uh, so, Alex, um, real quick, how long have you been on the island? Well, uh, my guys, story. If we could keep it down, guys, please. With that, so my story is a bit different. I um, uh, I'm from Chicago, and I uh, grew up uh, in a Puerto Rican neighborhood. Puerto Rican parents uh, in the city, and I came on vacation in '85. Uh, met my wife, uh, we fell in love, and I then went back to the states. And when we decided to get married, uh, we came to Puerto Rico to get married, and I was standing at Plaza Las Americas, uh, just doing some wedding shopping, um, and decided to stay. And that was 1988, so I've been here 34 years, and it was, it was the greatest, greatest decision of my life. Well, awesome. marrying, marrying uh, my wife and moving to Puerto Rico with her. Nice. <laughs> and Ramesh, you came last year for Blockchain Week and stood. Yeah, I, I came to. Did you hear me? Yeah. So I came to. I came to speak at an event uh, at the Polytechnic University uh, during the Puerto Rico Blockchain Week, December tenth of two thousand twenty-one. That's Friday, and uh, you know I met several people there, and including yeah. And then we decided. I I thought I could do something interesting in the community, working with the people I met uh, in terms of education. So I, I I went back, and after two weeks, I you know just moved here. Uh, like, December 31st, 11.30 p.m. I landed here. <laughs> I've been here since then. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll tell more about what we're doing in terms of hackathons and boot camps and all that. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So tell me, Alex, um, you know, you, you hear, you know, if you know Crypto Mondays, we're all about impacting the island and, um, you know, giving back to the island and doing our part uh, as a community. Um, I love what you're doing. We went to a meeting last week with, with, with you guys, and, and you guys are, have gathered the community to do some awesome work here on the island. So can we can we talk about that real quick? Yeah, well... Uh, or where do you want to start? No, that's a good place to start. Okay, uh, awesome. But, I mean, to, 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 to kind of, like, uh, arrive there, just a little bit of, of background. Uh, when I came to Puerto Rico, I came to Puerto Rico to uh, become a journalist, right? So I was a business journalist. I, uh, I worked as a reporter and then editor for Caribbean Business for 15 years. <clears throat> and so my job uh, as an editor is to analyze the economy, to try to identify trends and undercurrents and opportunities for the island to grow and create jobs and attract companies. And so, uh, so fast forward to the last couple of years, uh, and you know we've been in contraction for 16 years now without net growth. So we haven't grown as an island, uh, as an economy, since 2005 or 2006. Wow. That was the last wow. time we actually had net positive growth in Puerto Rico. And I'm sure Maria didn't help. With that? I'm no, sure Maria, Maria didn't help. Right. So Maria and the earthquakes and COVID all kind of like uh, contributed to that. Uh, so we can, you know, if you guys are interested into how we fell into that, we can talk about that later. But I mean, so it really, uh, you know, so last year, uh, you know, my job right now at Arco Relations, which is really an ad agency, uh, marketing agency, is to do strategic thinking, uh, including strategic thinking for Puerto Rico as a country. And so that's what I do, right? So I come up with, you know, I identify, just like I, as I was doing in the newspaper, I identify trends, opportunities, uh, you know, things, whatever we can do to just get Puerto Rico to grow again. So as soon as we saw, the growth of the Web3 community in Puerto Rico uh, under Act 60, you know, we noticed the, the opportunity, it was huge. 
So the uh, Michael Turpin hires us to do the video work for his Coin Agenda event last year at Coin Agenda, where I met Ramesh. Um, and so when I went back to edit the videos and and heard everything that was said by most, by half the panelists, right? So basically, their message was. Puerto Rico is today, given the presence of the community here, where Silicon Valley was in 2000, yeah. right? Definitely. Right. So it's not, I was just having a conversation about this earlier, so it's not really comparing with Silicon Valley today, it's really comparing with Silicon Valley in 2000, right? So it's very similar in terms of where we're at today with Web3 technology. So what Silicon Valley did to Web2, is what I heard all these speakers at last year's Blockchain Week uh, say or envision Puerto Rico becoming with Web3 technology, meaning the hub, the center of Web3 ventures and growth uh, for the world, right? So have it happen here. Uh, so one thing led to another, and last week uh, we had a meeting, Isaac was there and Ramesh was there uh, with uh, several folks in the community uh, to launch the PR Mega Puerto Rico Manufacturers Association Web3 Cluster, which is really the first major initiative in Puerto Rico to get the local economy, the one that has not grown in 16 years, right, to become one with the Web3 Act 60 economy that's growing like crazy in so, Puerto Rico. So the, the, the crypto community here in Puerto Rico um, is putting in work to make sure that the manufacturing that's done on the island is up to speed with what's going on in the world. That's right, that's the idea. Bottom line. Right. That's bottom right. line, that's the idea. So what you have is, you have folks like, like David Johnson and Brittany Kaiser and Brock Pierce and Michael Turpin and uh, David Bailey and a bunch of, of folks from the Act 60 community working with us and Ramesh um, uh, to get, um, well, here's the thing. Uh, did anybody see American President, the movie, the Michael Douglas movie, American President? Anybody? Only two people saw American <laughs> President? So you have a sign on your own. You're not, you're yeah. not on your own. I think it's in Netflix and Hulu and whatever, so you gotta go home tonight or tomorrow uh, and see American President. So in the movie, uh, you know, Michael Douglas is president and he falls in love with Annette Benning. And he's, he spends most of the movie trying to get flowers or roses for Annette Benning, right? And he's the president, so he can't just get in the car and go to a flower shop and get flowers for the lady. So he, he's frustrated until at the end of the movie, spoiler alert, he manages to get some roses for Annette Benning. And when he's asked, how did you get the roses? He says, well, it turns out I have a rose garden, right? Well, so, so here we are in Puerto Rico. We actually have three rose gardens in Puerto Rico. And nobody had actually made the connection. So the first rose garden that we have in Puerto Rico is the Act 60 Web3 community. It's already here and growing, right? And we don't Rapidly. Have to, what's that? Rapidly. Growing rapidly, right? So that's like, you know, uh, rose garden number one. Rose garden number two is what I keep hearing that we need founders in Puerto Rico, right? We have all these Web3 companies, but we don't have founders. We don't have startups starting here and revolutionizing the world with some great game-changing idea. So we need founders, right? So I keep hearing that. Well, it turns out we have another rose garden, which is a vast, large, thriving, long-running, local entrepreneurship community, but it's local people, local tech entrepreneurs launching some really cool ventures, but they're all Web2 ventures. They're not Web3 ventures. We want to get them into Web3 ventures, which is really what Ramesh is going to be talking about in a minute. Uh, so that's Rose Garden number two. Is an, it's really a vibrant community of founders. We have the founders. They just happen to be local, not folks from the outside, right? Uh, so that's Rose Garden number two. Rose Garden number three that we have in Puerto Rico is the Puerto Rico Manufacturers Association. It turns out that Puerto Rico is the largest industrial ecosystem in the world, right? There's no place on the planet Literally. with a higher concentration of manufacturing and related facilities and plants than Puerto Rico. That's been going on for 60, 70 years, is how Puerto Rico became developed, industrialized. We incentivized all kinds of companies to come to Puerto Rico, and they did. And so right now we have the world's biggest industrial ecosystem that's owned by the association, by the Manufacturer Association. 
So they happen to be a client of ours at the agency. We approached them with this idea. And we said, why don't we combine these three things? Why don't we have the local entrepreneurship community get into Web3, working with the Web3 community, and come up with the best game-changing ideas for the industrial ecosystem? So we can have local founders found ventures, Web3 software programming coding ventures, to sell to our local industrial ecosystem companies. If those use cases work, and we have a reason to believe that they will, then those contracts, those founders, will have access to a global supply chain of the likes of Lockheed Martin, Honeywell Aerospace, Merck, Pfizer, and all kinds of They're great companies. Here. They're, They're already here. here. They're already here. So we have the world's biggest companies, I mean, not the world's biggest companies, but some of the world's biggest companies in our already industrial ecosystem that can use these blockchain Web3 software solutions, right? So that's, that brings us back to those local founders, right? And getting them from Web2 to Web3, and that's where Ramesh comes in. So you get to, that's your cue. What are you doing to, to make sure that our local Web2 yeah. technology community becomes educated in Web3 and can launch Web3 ventures? Yeah, so I will give a background story and then I'll come in and I'll talk about what's ha what we are doing here in Puerto Rico. Uh, so I, I used to live in Silicon Valley 14 years um, and I have a PhD in engineering. I, I was teaching at Auburn University in Alabama four years, I'm an educator and then um, I was in Silicon Valley 14 years. I have both the academic experience and the industry experience in Silicon Valley. And the last uh, about five years now, I've been involved in blockchain space. Uh, I'm very active in terms of I, I started like 55 blockchain groups all over the world. Um, I'm part of an organization called... Uh, okay. All right. Here, okay. It's called uh, IEEE, I -E -E -E. it's basically an association of uh, electrical engineers globally. They have 400,000 members in 160 countries. It's the largest technical organization in the world. I started the blockchain uh, committee under it, and, uh, and as part of it, I've given talks in like 120 talks in 50 countries and uh, started like 55 blockchain groups. I came here during the Puerto Rico Blockchain Week. I found out like uh, there's a lot of entrepreneurs mood here, and there's also capital like you know crypto VCs, but not many local developers. I mean they're not trained. The engineers are not trained to do blockchain. There are a lot of engineers. Puerto Rico graduates 26,000 STEM graduates every year. The universities in Puerto Rico. That's a lot. 26,000. And I was like, okay. Even in fact, I was talking to, I think it's David, right? David, you're in the back. He was telling me he had, tr he had trouble finding developers for his startup. Was it last year, David? So I heard this from many entrepreneurs during that week when I was here for one week. And I go, okay, so maybe I can do something here. Uh, I, so I, I, I met this guy, several volunteers from different universities here. So we put together a team you know, I've been working with them, and uh, we used, you know, we went to different universities and, you know, pitch this blockchain education plan, where we we did a boot camp. Boot camp is basically your training, you know, um, over six Saturdays during summer. We did a boot camp. We had two instructors at the University of Puerto Rico, Mayavis, and two instructors at Polytechnic and Zoom about 80 people. Total, we trained like 125 developers on blockchain. Nice. Um, so, so I'm working with, I'm like mentor. Uh, there's like four people who are doing that actual coding content and all of that. So we did the boot camp in summer, and then end of August, we did the hackathon. How many of you know what a hackathon is? Hackathon is you bring people together and give them problems to solve, and they create you know, teams and they work on it, right, the code. So we did that in August, uh, like three days, 25, 26, 27, like uh, those uh, dates. We had 30 developers, all local. 11, we gave out 11 prizes. Actually, we gave out prizes to everybody who participated in that hackathon that time. So everybody got a prize uh, from 5,000 to 500. Um, so that was the first time we did that. And then we are repeating the second time. We're, we're doing it second time here. We actually started, uh, November 11th, we started the second hackathon. 
Uh, it's ongoing right now. I think we have like 80 some participants right now. They're all on Discord. You know, we have several people helping them. And we gave them some problems to solve, uh, specific to Puerto Rico problems. So they're working on it. The judging, we will judge. We pick the winners on December 4th. And we will announce the winners at the Puerto Rico Blockchain Trade Association event, PRBTA on Monday. So we are working with PRBTA. We are working with, uh, you know, Crypto Curious, IEEE. But the organization is called Evolving Space. So now we want to keep doing this every year. Like this year we train, like the goal is 250 developers. Next year train 500 developers. And then 2024,000, and then you know 2,000. I keep we, we need scaling. more developers on the island for sure. Yeah, and we need more plan. developers to you know for people like David and several other entrepreneurs looking for developers, and also, also you know they can create their own startups. You know, actually, the 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 guy who got the first prize at the last hackathon, he got a grant five thousand five thousand dollar grant from Casper Labs. Yeah. Casper Labs CTO was there. Because we had 15 judges, all the founders of the you know big projects were on the team, the judges. She liked the project. She gave him like, I think he got like 5,000 plus 5,000, right? 5,000 the price, first price, and Casper Labs gave him another 5,000 grand nice. match. So anyway, this is the kind of thing we want to do. And uh, as I said, we want to develop the local workforce. So that's one thing, right? There's another thing that I'm trying to do is uh, there is an incubator in uh, Crypto Valley. How many of you know Crypto Valley in Zug, Switzerland? So they have a crypto and an incubator. So we're trying to bring them here uh, to create like a hub for the whole Americas, north and south. And actually, they came here a month ago. They're planning to come back again and in, uh, in uh, during the Puerto Rico Blockchain Week. So what I'm trying to do is um, all the global connections I have, I'm trying to see how I can help the local Puerto Rican community in terms of developing the ecosystem, the workforce. Yeah, I mean, any, awesome. I mean so, yeah, anyone who wants to help, please uh, contact me or Alex. We will get you involved in whatever way you want to help. You could be a volunteer, you could be a quarter, you could be funding, anything you want to contribute. It's a community effort, actually. Yeah. Thanks. Right. So. That's that's uh, that's just amazing. Uh, I mean, we, uh, Ramesh and I met at last year's Blockchain Week. Uh, we sat at the same table uh, by coincidence, so we just introduced each other, and um, and you know we've been like at this ever since, right? So um, the other part of the local startup ecosystem that we're working with is the Puerto Rico Science, Technology, and Research Trust. So the Science Trust, as we call it for short, um, uh, they've been, uh, not they've been, they actually run uh, the biggest and most successful local acceleration and incubation programs on the island. So they've been at it for about 10, 15 years. Uh, they graduate you know, over 100 uh, uh, entrepreneurs and ventures every year uh, across their various programs. A lot of those ventures are Web2 technology focused, uh, successful. They end up you know, becoming uh, very successful business people and companies uh, headquartered in Puerto Rico. So we have been talking to them and they're already on board to turn their entrepreneurs into Web3 technology. So instead of just having Web2 technology ventures coming out of the science trust, which again, it's entirely local community, local ecosystem. Uh, now we'll be having Web3 uh, ventures. Uh, so, and you know, the evolving space community with the science trust community, uh, we're really tapping into a vast space locally. Um, so, last week we had the first meeting of the Puerto Rico Manufacturer Association Web3 cluster. Uh, so, we had all these players present at the PRMA office in Guaynabo. Uh, we're going to be launching officially in, uh, during Blockchain Week in, in Coin Agenda, either Tuesday or Wednesday, which we're trying to figure out the slot to have the big announcement. And we're going to have the, the senior team of the association and some of our partners and organizations from the local community, from the Web3 community, uh, uh, present at the event, do some press coverage and whatnot. And then we just look forward to in 2023 having a lot of these local ventures coming out of uh, the Evolving Space hackathons and boot camps, coming out of the Science Trust uh, uh, ecosystem, uh, and matching them 
with these large corporations to do the use cases, to do the software programs that these companies need, that they're now using Web2 technology for, and have them start contracting and hiring some of our local developers for Web3 solutions to displace the Web2 incumbents and have the big players be headquartered in Puerto Rico and grow from here and hopefully realize the vision that we keep hearing uh, about Puerto Rico being that next Silicon Valley uh, if, we have, if, we, if we get enough local founders and, and, and founders from outside the island moving to Puerto Rico. So that's the vision, that's the role, that's the so, initiative. So we're how, really excited. How can the community help you? Oh, uh, wow. Uh, uh, first, uh, <laughs> by joining in terms of... Is this I mean, a community effort? Yeah. The community, I mean, the Web3 community in Puerto Rico has the knowledge, the skill set, the staff, the innovation. Uh, I mean, you've moved to Puerto Rico with the knowledge and with the companies already operating and, and leading the world in what is going on in the Web3 blockchain space. So to the extent... Uh, the graduates from Russia's uh, Evolving Space Hackathons can partner, uh, just like uh, those companies are doing with Casper Labs, multiply that you know, uh, many times fold, and having uh, our uh, ventures, our local ventures, uh, partner with you guys in just developing the solution, and then coming uh, to our companies at the PRMA to, to do the use cases, to actually roll them out, and to get global supply chain contracts that have just helped these ventures scale and, and, and throw them into the second uh, 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 stage, second round, third round uh, um, of capital raise. So it's about collaborating with you guys to work with the local ventures to develop the solutions that will then be presented to the large manufacturing companies for global scale. So that's really, plus the capital, uh, they're going to be raising capital. So to the extent you guys can be in those pitches and receive the pitch, and invest in these local ventures that'll then be, again, uh, uh, connecting with the local global uh, manufacturing companies, we have ourselves a great uh, you know, formula for success. The Web3 community with the knowledge and the capital, the local ventures coming out of uh, uh, the evolving space activities and the science trust activities, and the manufacturing companies hiring them for the use cases for global supply chain scale. So awesome. it's, it's so a we, great we, combination. We, all three of us keep saying uh, blockchain week, blockchain week, blockchain week. I know that there's some people out here that just came to Puerto Rico for the first time. You know what I mean? And what, what, what is blockchain week in, well, blockchain, in Puerto Rico? Yeah, blockchain week is a combination of four organizations that combine efforts. So instead of each doing a separate event during the year, they've agreed to do their events the same week. So Monday, as Ramesh said, is the Puerto Rico Blockchain, Blockchain Trade Association. December 5th. Monday, what did I say? It's Monday, December 5th. Yes. Monday, Dece Monday, December 5th is the Blockchain Trade Association Day. And they have panels and conferences and activities. And their focus is to highlight the companies that are already building and growing and founding companies on the island. Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday is Michael Turpin's Coin Agenda and Bid Angels. And Thursday. Right? Yeah. So it's, no, Thursday is Brian uh, Bourgeois' Uncommon Entrep Entrepreneurs. Uncommon. Yep. Right? That's Thursday. And then Friday is Isaac and Brother Pedro and Limitless. So Limitless is the Friday event, which is focused on whales and focused on high uh, uh, high end um, uh, developers. Uh, again, Thursday is uh, Uncommon Entrepreneurs. That's Brian Bourgeois' uh, uh, a series of panels and, and, and page and investor dinners and whatnot. Uh, Wednesday and Tuesday is uh, Michael Turpin's, Tuesday is Coin Agenda, Wednesday is Bid Angels Pitch Events, uh, and then Monday is uh, blockchain, tr blockchain Trade Association Day. And we, we so, also have a Crypto Monday's party at the end, right. that night, that night. Right. They cut you off, you yeah. see. <laughs> yeah, uh, too uh, many. Right? And Sunday, December 4th, is when we pick the winners right. for the hackathon. Right. <laughs> so so, so Sunday, it starts, Sunday's Evolving Space Day. It sun, starts Sunday, actually, then. <laughs> Sunday, December 4th. Through Are you guys having an event? Uh, well, the yeah, we will have an event. We, we'll meet at Engine 4. and uh, It's open. Anybody can come. Awesome. Yeah. So how can, how can uh, everybody out there get 
information about what's going on here with the, yeah. the hackathon, what's going on with um, with the the, the Puerto Rico um, uh, Manufacturing Association. How can people that want to get involved that are out there, how can they get involved? How can they reach well, you guys? I can share the QR code. They can scan and... Uh, I'm talking about the, the, the YouTube video. Oh, the YouTube video. So we can share the link so they can just sign up. W what is the link? It's a link for the hackathon community, the Web3 yes, hackathon community. Do you have a, community. a Facebook yeah. or a Telegram or? Yeah, Facebook? it's an Eventbrite What's link. Uh, okay. Yeah, Eventbrite link. And for the Puerto Rico Blockchain Yeah, Association. for the blockchain, for the, for the PRMA uh, Web3 cluster, you can contact me as well. I'll be around uh, a little bit. Uh, I can tell you my phone number, my, my email. Uh, every, you know, we're, we're all in in terms of connecting with Web3 companies and players and investors um, uh, to help in this process, right? So. Uh, we're in it together, so basically it's Evolving Space, PRMA, uh, plus the other players, the Science Trust, uh, the Blockchain Trade Association. Uh, in fact, the Blockchain Trade Association and PRMA will be signing or doing an MOU uh, uh, coming up uh, to work on this together. Uh, so again, we have a group of organizations that has uh, come together around this mission of connecting the local ventures with the, with the Web3 community, with the PRMA members, and having just the Puerto Rico uh, uh, community uh, explode and truly become that next Silicon Valley uh, as has been envisioned and as we continue hearing uh, so much uh, as, you know, as, as the potential for Puerto Rico. Uh, this is a big step in the direction of, of making that dream a reality, making it come true. Yeah, actually, you know, Alex and I'm working with MSL, we've been working on bringing all these different groups and activities together to create this ecosystem. That's what we've been doing and you know, the cluster and in fact, even in the Puerto, Puerto Rico Blockchain Week is if you go to prblockchainweek.io, everything is listed there, right? People yeah, they, they have the master pass there and yeah. they have all the events there. Yes. And we, we are working together, right? As yes. a, anybody here actually willing to be part of this, they could be part of it and help. A hundred percent. We, we, we uh, yeah. the the crypto community here. Um, from the moment I arrived, uh, I mean, I noticed they are so um, willing to help and give information Absolutely. and and share their information. They've been yeah. very knowledgeable, and we, like you said, we got some of the greatest minds in the world here in San Juan. So that's why I say, you know, network with the person next next to you. Find out what they do. Find out what they got going on. You, you'll be surprised. In fact, uh, uh, you know, we're in the, uh, uh, in the Crypto Mondays Telegram chat, so you yes. can reach us there as well, right? So you can just look up Alex Diaz or through Isaac. Uh, you can get in touch with us as well if, if we can't uh, quite connect tonight. So it's really easy to connect. Uh, you know, it's just awesome. a Telegram uh, message away, uh, and, and here we are. Let's, let's get into some questions, yeah? Awesome. Anybody got any questions? There we go. Uh, this question for Ramesh. Yeah. Um, the hackathon. You look, you look familiar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we've met. Hey, uh, Ramesh, what's the so the hackathon has a specific subject, and what's the subject for the hackathon this year? So we actually picked a challenge. Uh, the challenge is uh, let me actually. I'll send you the deck. There's it's a whole challenge. Uh, let me send you the deck. There's like three challenge we picked. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's three challenges. One is climate change, okay. how to build resilience uh, for Puerto Rico, particularly um, uh, weather forecasting data for the government, right? So how do we get uh, the government to be better prepared uh, to be able to, to prepare in advance? So that's, that's one challenge. Um, uh, the other challenge is fundraising or grant, fundraising from federal grant. I mean, all kinds of uh, federal grants that go uh, unfulfilled in Puerto Rico because a lot of people, organizations, just do not know uh, or are not particularly good at applying and getting those grants. So the, question, the challenge is how can we use blockchain technology to help organizations, government agencies, uh, companies, anyone, students, to be better able to access federal grants um, uh, to Puerto Rico so we can better access that money. And yeah. the third challenge is? Well, the third is uh, like several tracks on NFTs, DeFi's, and DAOs, but I, I have a deck here. I would be happy to share the deck with you, yeah. Right. We're also working uh, uh, with a group of, with a couple of investors that are in the Bitcoin space 
uh, to see if we can do a, uh, a challenge next hackathon on Bitcoin payment systems, right? So that we will throw out the challenge to the group in the hackathon for them to come up with Bitcoin payment solutions for companies, for governments, etc. So that one's coming up in, a, in, a, in an upcoming um, uh, hackathon as well. So we're open to ideas, any suggestions you may have on, on uh, hackathon challenges that'll be uh, 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 really good to come up with great use cases and great solutions uh, out of the hackathons. Evolving Space is the nonprofit that we are setting up and which is going to keep doing this over and over, right? We, we did it two times this year, the hackathon, the second one is happening. Next year we want to do it like uh, at least three times a year, like a spring, summer, and then fall. And that's how we would you know, train like 500,000, 2,000 developers per year. We, we are connecting with all the local universities uh, like the uh, engineering schools, uh, Polytechnic, there's the you know, Inter-American, there's the Ana Mendes, and there's the University of Puerto Rico, uh, Maya West. So we're connecting with all of the universities and getting the students interested in blockchain and Web3. And we go out and actually give talks in each one of them. Um, so uh, next year, you know, you may want to consider supporting it in whichever way, like it could be the Act 60 donation or you could be volunteering your time. For example, David said he wants to help coding with coding some of the, the developers. Um, so, you know, anything, like if you want to just support, you can just be there and support them too. <laughs> Show up there. Yeah, We're also you. working on, a, on another initiative, with, not another, I mean, it's, it's all related, uh, with an organization called Imprende, right? So Imprende, uh, uh, it's a social enterprise. They do, uh, they do a lot of things, but one of the things they do is they do content projects, educational projects um, uh, for various causes. And so uh, we're working together for them to create content, tutorial videos, classes, curriculum, etc., for Web3 uh, education uh, to use in various ways. And so one of the ways is for the, uh, the IT departments of PRMA member companies. So again, we have over a thousand companies uh, that are part of this industrial ecosystem on the island. Those IT departments, let's say if they average four people each, we're looking at four or 5,000 people who are not today into blockchain, Web3 technology and solutions. So we're working with Imprende to come up with all kinds of ways of educating our member companies at PRMA so then they can get into it. So they can learn blockchain technology and remember, I mean, I mean, you guys know, I mean, if you're already a technologist, if you're already into Web, th uh, web 2, and you're, you're working in an IT department, or you just got a, a degree, one of the 26,000 STEM graduates on the island, in, in Web 2-based technology, the leap from Web 2 to Web 3 is not huge. You're already into technology. You're already a technologist, right? So to learn blockchain technology and to, and to learn the, how, you know, what it can mean to your company or to your government agency or to your, or to your operation, it's not a, a big leap that takes a long time. It's just about getting you into it, getting you educated into it uh, or in it. And that's what these organizations are, um, are, are, are focusing on now. So they're part of the ecosystem. They're part of the cluster as well. Uh, and we're just so excited to, to see this really coming together. Uh, and looking forward to a, an explosive 2023 uh, to really make this dream come true. You, you can see how passionate Alex is, right? So this is, this is the reason why things are moving. <laughs> All right, here we go. One more question. Okay, I'm going to volunteer to be Napoleon's corporal here, make sure we're all on the same page. Um, so just to, as far as definitions, I mean, Web 1 was basically like AOL or maybe like original Google, where it's just the company owns the, you know, the company makes, the company provides a service, the company makes money off of whatever, ads or subscription or whatever. Web 2 is like where you start to have influencers, right? People are on Facebook or Instagram, they get a bunch of followers and then they, they're making money off of that, but they can be canceled at any moment by the platform that they're on, right? Is that kind of what Web 2 is? And then Web 3 is where you're making, you kind of have ownership in the platform or you are, you, or you're a little bit uncancelable or you're the, like the creators kind of partially own the platform or are in more control of their, their revenue stream. 
or like how would you define the the, the big difference between and obviously cryptocurrency related right but like how would you define the biggest differences between like web two and web three and, and even web one and web two or web two and web three like there's a difference between web two and one, web three where it grew but it, it, which is also different than the difference between web one and web, web two like how would you okay. kind of describe that that story there of those changes i will let the blockchain professor answer that question <laughs> good yeah that's a good one for him so um, you know the term the term Web three is still not defined clearly, but it depends on who you talk to. So if you talk to the blockchain community like Ethereum and all these folks, they're talking about Web three uh, like ownership of assets. Uh, you know, it could be like NFTs uh, or even tokens. Like uh, I'll give you, I'll make it simple here, right? I mean, look. Uh, if, if you have American Airlines miles, you can only use those miles to buy a ticket American, with American Airlines. You can't use those miles to buy United ticket. Same thing with United Airlines miles, right? They're all isolated systems. So when you have tokens, this is where the blockchain comes in. You can take those you know, assets outside of it and you can actually sell it and you can buy other things. So, so tokens can create a virtual economy. So the same thing applies to games. Today, if you play one game, there are some tokens, are, are they call like reward points, within that game. But there's no meaning outside of that game. You can't take those points outside and monetize it. But the blockchain tokens, the virtual economy created by blockchain, enables you to take those, the, you know, you get tokens, you can sell those tokens outside and go to another game, buy something else. So it, this, it creates a virtual economy, connects all these closed systems. So the games, metaverse. So to come back, coming back now, you know, Web3 in the blockchain community, when they're talking about it, they're talking about this collection of these ideas, like, you know, the tokens, NFTs, uh, uh, and then also ownership of assets, ownership of data, and also DAO, which is a community, right, that governs some assets, uh, you know, uh, and of course, metaverse, and then play to earn games and move to earn games. All of these things that you hear, you know, they all fall in this one bucket called Web3. But if you talk to the guy who invented internet, uh, he doesn't like this term. So it depends on who you talk to. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, would, I would only add to that. Um, uh, so Web2... Uh, has had some issues, right? And we all know the problems with Web 2. Hacking, security, I mean, cybersecurity is, is a big problem, it's a big deal. Um, uh, data, right? So the big five tech, co tech company basically own your, your data, own your life, right? So whenever you surf the internet with Google or, or any other browser, uh, uh, they just capture your data and sell it for marketing purposes. Uh, you know, um, you know, whenever you use Gmail or email, whenever you use uh, any, any one of these free services that you use uh, on the internet, uh, they capture your data and then use your data uh, for commercial purposes. So there's, a, there's a prob all kinds of problems with that in terms of, you know, what happens to your data. You know, you don't own your data after that, right? So what Web3 is, is doing along the lines that Ramesh was talking about is fixing those gaps. So it's better for privacy, better for security, less hacking, and even when you're hacked in, um, in, uh, in, in, um, in, in a Web3 space, uh, because there's greater transparency and traceability and immutability, then the person who hacked you is usually caught because he hacked a Web3 uh, 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 system. So what Web3 does is really fix the gaps that we have suffered with, uh, with Web2 for these last 20, 25 years, uh, with better security, better privacy, uh, more transparency, uh, you know, faster uh, transactions, more secure transactions uh, when you use crypto, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, it's, it's a higher level online internet technology compared to Web2. So if I were to make it, uh, you know, like one sentence, Web3 enables ownership of assets data at the user level, users like we can own assets and get paid data, for it. Yeah, monetize them. Yeah, that, that's great. Um, and that that remind the ownership of the data thing, not just the uh, 
ownership of the money and the, and the tokens and all that, that reminded me of something. Like, for instance, my dad, uh, he basically had a password that was too short, and he got his Facebook account hacked, and uh, someone else owns his Facebook account now. And he's contacted Facebook and said, hey, uh, can you delete my account? Can, we, can I get my account back? And they're like, no, like, we don't have time for that. And yeah. so it, that's, that's like how Web2 works, right? We own your data yeah. and we don't care. Like there's no money in it for us to like hire a person to give you your account back or whatever. How would that change with Web3? Like what would be the mechanism by which something like a Facebook or social media thing like that would work where if someone somehow hacked him, he still retains ownership or he still, or at least he knows who it was that hacked him or or whatever, like, how would that be different um, <clears throat> under that sort of a situation? Yeah, well, uh, identity happens to be one of the big things of blockchain, right? So uh, essentially, right now, when you shop at Amazon, uh, you set up a separate profile on Amazon. When you get a Netflix account, you set up a separate account in Netflix. When you, I mean, Spotify is a separate account. I mean, everything you use in Web2 requires a separate profile, separate account, Facebook, you know, um, uh, Twitter, etc. With Web3 and blockchain, you set up a single identity node, right, that has all your information, and then you control what that, what, what, you know, the use of that of that identity I'm, I'm uh, beyond gonna, that point. I'm not going to give Ron, uh, Ron the mic back because he's ready to go in on that one. No, so. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, well, there awesome, you go. Awesome, awesome, Yeah. Yeah, if you want to add something to that. <laughs> the whole identity identity uh, uh, feature of, of blockchain. Uh, that sounds like a beer talk we can have after. after yes. <laughs> All right. So, guys. But essentially, essentially you, set up, you set up one identity profile, and then use that for all the services you're going to use, right? Now, today... Right. So, t and then you control you control what Twitter can access, what Netflix can access, what Amazon can access. You control that. They don't. Right. So it's not like today where you give you set up a separate profiles with each one, and then they control what they use that data on or with. Right. With blockchain, you set up a single identity account, and then when you open up your Twitter or your Spotify or your Netflix or whatever. You decide what you share when you open those accounts. So it's, it's a, the privacy control is a lot greater uh, than it is today. That's the, that's the vision, but we are not there yet. We're not, uh, right. We're not there yet because none of these uh, services exists. are set up for Web3. Right so we're, just, we're waiting for the Web3 social media subscription services and all the others to emerge headquartered in Puerto Rico from one of his hackathons and one of our <laughs> ventures, so then we can take over the world and have all the social media and all the shopping I love services. It. I love come the way out of you Puerto guys Rico. are thinking. I love it. Thank, seriously, guys, seriously. Thank that you. That is serious. Yeah. No, seriously. Thank you for all the work and and and, and it takes to to bring these things together. You know what I mean? It, it takes it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of community. You know what I mean? So um, if anybody's interested out there in helping these guys with the mission, um, I, Crypto Mondays is here for whatever you guys need. You know that you ever need a stage, you need whatever. Um, thank you. Just thank All you. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. Guys, awesome. we got Blockchain Week coming up. You know, 2000... Uh, 2022? <laughs> December 5, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. December, December 5th 5. through the 9th. <laughs> yeah. um, limitless. Don't don't miss it, guys. Thank you for coming out tonight. The true warriors of, of crypto, right? Awesome. <laughs>